How's it, boys? I got a story for you today. So, I was watching this show called Chimp Empire on Netflix. Netflix is not usually a good thing. I, I think in the majority of cases, it's not a good use of your time. But I was on it because low-key, I'm like a bit of a digital addict still. So, I was watching this show and... I learned a lot about human nature from this show about chimpanzee society. It was so striking at first, like I didn't really, I didn't really notice it much in the beginning, but the more I started paying attention, I was like, holy shit, we are literally just smart chimpanzees. And a lot of you are probably like, wow, Matthew, no fucking shit, Sherlock. Like, that is exactly what we are. We are just smart chimpanzees, right? But it holds implications about society and about, you know, behavior of people that I really didn't consider very much until truly taking time to think about it. Now, in the show, there is a group called the Centralists. It's like the biggest um group after they all split uh there's like a group that owns like the central territory and a group that owns like the western territory and the central group is made up of like 24 individuals and i think the western group is made up of like uh like 16 or something but anyway it's less numbers quite significantly less numbers in the western group but they're still quite strong so the westerners you know, to compete for resources and to try and win back territory that they had lost previously, came across or they pushed deep into central territory to try and challenge, you know, the the central like chimps. And they came across one single chimp on his own and they killed him. <laughs> they do this to establish you know dominance and to gain territory but one thing the narrator said stuck out to me the narrator was talking about how it's not in chimpanzee nature to have mercy on an outsider right it's like they see a rival gang and it's not or a rival individual and it's not like oh here's another chimpanzee you know what are they up to what do they do with their time like huh let's let's you know eat the ticks off each other's backs and get to know each other no they fucking murked his ass like 1v8 and that was just what they did right and this was you know in an attempt to compete for resources right so it's like the westerners needed more food they didn't have enough food and so they pushed into the central territory to basically steal the centralists fruit trees they wanted to be like they wanted to basically push the boundary of the territory so that they encompass like an important tree basically and the narrator was pretty much saying you know it's not in chimpanzees nature to you know you know have mercy on an outsider or to basically try and extend past their group they they sort of they, they fight for dominance they fight for territory and for food and for chimp woman and that's basically it right and they were trying to draw a contrast and say that people don't do this too which i think is a, the biggest load of bullshit because people absolutely fucking do the exact same thing we just do it through different means these days right there is a law in the world and the law goes like this big fucks small and this goes for basically everything look i think there's you know it's possible for this to not always be the case you know i think there is a level of there is a higher self that human beings have and i'm saying this more from a spiritual perspective there is a higher self, you know, that we have access to if we so desire, um, where we can transcend things like scarcity 
and need and this kind of violence. Most people don't. I think the majority of people operate just, you know, on their chimp, Im- you know, uh, instincts. But I think some people do. There, There is a rare contingent of people who do actually, you know, rise above, you know, a tribal nature and do things purely out of principle um, and hold a very high moral standard for themselves. I think that's, you know, that's there's definitely people who do that. But one of the things about this chimp society that was so interesting was that as I was watching it, I basically realized it's like if human beings didn't, um, you know, if human beings didn't have like the ability or the intellect to separate, you know, instincts and actions, right? If they didn't have a, a bridge to actually like take responsibility, if, like fun- the fundamental of being able to experience something, feel something, and then pause before acting like that fundamental kind of chain, right, is the thing that separates us. But there's many, many things that are very similar. The males compete within their own group for dominance. And human beings do this too. Except we don't do it through physical means necessarily anymore. A lot of times it comes down to like a level of a mental battle nowadays and also financially. So it's like in chimp society, they say physical power is the same as political power. So like the, the alpha chimp of the group and it is, there is actually like, an alpha male right and not in the sense where it's like not in relating to wolves or packs of wolves or whatever where the science was incorrect about that no there is actually like a dominant male chimp right like the biggest and the most dominant um, usually the strongest as well uh, that actually you know the entire group has kind of like set as the leader right like if the dominant male attacks another group the rest of his gang will follow and also attack if the dominant male runs away the rest of the group also runs away right so they hold a level of leadership that the other males don't hold and i think that holds true to regular society as well right with human beings because it's just now that the weapons are different right so instead of being based purely on size it's also like the billionaires the people who are financially extremely successful um, also hold a place in society where they get the benefits of being you know the dominant chimp but obviously in human terms so that would be you know if you want to take a more like red pill approach you know that would be like an abundance of women and basically freedom uh, to do whatever you want with your time and um and also the respect and revealment and uh you know and all of that of other people usually right so it's like you get a lot of times like celebrity status and then all the benefits that come along with that and so one thing i think that has led young men astray is the fact that we we look at chimp society and we think to ourselves oh we are so different when in fact we are not one of the things that was said that stuck out to me so much was like physical power is the exact same thing as political power like if the alpha male of the chimp group gets physically injured they have to continue like they have to pretend that they are just as strong as they were otherwise another male will rise up and use the opportunity to like secure the alpha position right often by like killing the alpha male while he is weakened so we think that we're like so far above this kind of thing like oh like you know humans don't do that i think everyone who wants you to believe that humans are so different and we're so all above this kind of shit 
are the people who want to take advantage of the fact that it's easy for them to win a battle when you don't know you're fighting one. If you don't know that you're fighting some type of battle, the enemy automatically wins, right? Because if you don't know you're fighting a battle, you can't fight back. And it's not to say that every person you run into is your enemy. I mean, far from it, right? But it's to say that you mustn't treat this as like a casual game where you can just take your time as much as you want. Your physical strength and size doesn't matter, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Your physical strength and size really does matter, even in this modern day, right? Because, you know, we've modernized a lot of things, but our brain has remained structurally, you know, very similar to how it was when we were hunter gatherers when we were just fucking caveman like ooga booga like s- club smack the other one you know and then steal the woman uh, like we still use almost the exact same software as we used to use back in those days and the people who win understand that the people who win like leverage these avenues of you know human expression and competition to actually gain a leg up when compared to someone who you know has this kind of false belief that we're just so above it all right (sighs) become big and strong the confidence that it will give you to know that you can fuck anyone else up in a hand-to-hand fight is huge and you should leverage that you should learn to fight hand to hand go learn muay thai go learn jiu-jitsu for me currently i'm doing jiu-jitsu go start but i want to start muay thai too i gotta get my finances up so i can pay for the classes on my own and that's also a process but like use these avenues and treat it as a competition because it is it's just that the majority of people have been duped Ah, fuck. The majority of people have been duped into thinking that there is no competition going on. So the few people who are actually trying already have a massive fucking leg up compared to everyone else. And that's really what I've started to like understand about all of this shit. It's like, stop neglecting your physical strength. It still matters in today's day and age. Our brains are still very similar, if not exactly the same as they were about a hundred years ago our technology has just advanced very far since then so don't neglect your physical strength right if you go and learn how to fight with people hand to hand you learn how to get punched in the face a little bit and still be like okay you get comfortable with that realm right it gives you confidence that most people don't have access to because most people have checked out and said it's not important anymore i have the police i have a gun i have whatever and i'm not saying that that's not true on some level right but i'm saying you can leverage this like caveman part of your brain to get the results that you want in this modern world right if you can fight and if if, like if you can fight it gives you the ability to actually like tap into some type of dominance, some level of aggression that you have deep inside, right? And that's really fucking important, right? Because you have to be able to assert yourself in this world so that you aren't the small getting fucked by the big. Seriously. If you can't assert yourself in this world, if you don't have a plan for yourself, someone else has a plan for you that's it's really fucking important that you like internalize what i'm saying here and not because it's going to make my life easier not because it's going to you know whatever i mean i guess yeah people watching my youtube video will make my life easier or maybe give me some access (laughs) to some fucking money bro Uh, but i'm not doing it for that right i'm looking out for my fellow chimps (laughs) okay because my life got infinitely better when I like started leaning into 
like the biological nature of things right and, and don't even don't even take my words and wrap it around some fucking weird red pill alt-right whatever shit right i'm not even saying in in relation to any of that shit i'm saying as in it's like in a world where everyone shuns strength and size or more most people do just trying puts you ahead of most people in a world that shuns the fact that human beings are animals deep down right animals inherently would you know have selfishness have aggression have the ability to sit on others to get a leg up if you ignore that fundamental nature you don't thrive and i'm not saying go be selfish i'm not saying go fuck other people over i'm saying acknowledge that within yourself right explore that and take some of it and actually like siphon it into a constructive outlet it's motivating for me when i sit down and i think to myself by making this youtube video i'm giving myself the potential to like financially dominate someone else and that sounds like oh toxic oh fucked up oh whatever no it's not i refuse that me leveraging this like level of competition with others maybe it'll be the difference between me being able to retire my parents or take care of my parents when they're older maybe some push bad medical emergency happens and because i put in this work because i decided to like use the fucking brain that i have been given i will have the financial means to take care of people who matter to me don't shun this game that is life don't shun your nature because if you do that you separate yourself from even the possibility of winning at least if you try you can actually lose but if you don't try you are experiencing something way worse than losing which is not even being on the fucking field not even playing the point of all of this is to play life so do it don't shun yourself and don't shy away from the parts of yourself that everyone tells you are bad if you're a man lean into some aggression sometimes why because there's forces in this world that you will benefit greatly from opposing and if you don't you will be the victims of those forces so for someone who's like never be aggressive it's toxic i'm not saying go fucking cuss out your partner or something i'm not saying whatever go do some crazy shit what i'm saying is understand that there is a place and a time for everything that you experience and everything that you have that aggression has a place in time that anger has a place in time so does the sadness it has a place in time lean into this the resistance of this is what causes so many people so much suffering pain is not optional pain is not optional suffering is because suffering in my mind is self-inflicted through resistance The willingness to lean into everything that is will separate you from most people because for most people including myself it is very difficult to sit here with a feeling that we have been conditioned to believe is negative or evil or bad i sit here i feel deep anxiety or fear what has society told me about that oh don't don't do that don't be scared don't be a bitch don't uh 
whatever it is, you know, don't be sad. Just think positive thoughts, you know, gratitude journal. And again, not saying there's not a place for that, but don't use all of that shit to just push down your experiences, right? If you have anger, if you have a sadness, if you have anxiety, lean into it, right? It is the nature of people. It is the nature of life to have things that are scary to have things that are sad to have things that are stressful the less that you have this negative like hateful relationship with these parts of yourselves the less suffering in my definition you will incur you will still feel pain but it's not the same thing as being split in the middle Anyway, I think this video is kind of going off the rails a little bit. So, <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is return to Monke. And, uh, and yeah, that, no, that's legitimately what I'm saying. It's a bit more complicated than, but, than that, but, but no, nah, return to Monke. Okay. I'll, I'll wait. Fucking dickhead. <laughs>